So uh, two things I want to mention before Loretta gets into Yuri's night. Um, first of all, uh, George and Loretta aren't the only ones who met at space events. Simone and I actually met at Yuri's night last year. So a uh, big thank you. And, uh, uh, so that's number one. Um, and two, uh, not only is she going to talk about Yuri's night, but it's a, it's a community-oriented event. And so you know we want people in the community to help out. So part of what we want to do here is involve anybody who wants to throw an awesome space party. In it. So I'll leave you with that. And Loretta, take it. Uh, it, it's really perfect too because uh, Yuri's night is. Uh, uh, George and I are obviously a real commitment to space love, uh, and we're very proud at Yuri's night to have a long history of of bringing people together. We've caused a few marriages. Uh, in fact, we've even caused a marriage in space. There is a cosmonaut who is training in Houston, uh, who met had had met a Russian woman and lost track of her, and they re connected at the Yuri's Night Houston event and fell in love and got engaged and while he was on the International Space Station uh, arranged their wedding and luckily Texas is one of those states where uh, <coughs> both parties don't have to be present for the legal ceremony. <laughs> it's a very progressive state. <laughs> and so uh, by proxy with the, you know, whatever, uh, cardboard cutout of the cosmonaut and he was on the line from Space Station, so by phone uh, you know, they did a in-space wedding, which was great. So we're very proud. Um, so I, I did this in, in, on a Mac, of course, and we're now showing it on a PC. So this is why you get these lovely artistic effects of all the letters being over each other. This, this is just to give you a sense. So it, basically the idea is um, to, it's a grassroots event. That we, we encourage people around the world to host events every around every April 12th to um, celebrate the first human to go into space, Yuri Gagarin, and um, to really think about like our, the future of humanity in space. And so this is just our you know map of the world at night, and all the dots represent events. And then this just shows o over the ten years that we've been doing Yuri's Night how it's gotten bigger and bigger. And of course, the, last year was the 50th anniversary of human spaceflight, which is really exciting for us. Um, and we had over 600 events in over 70 countries, uh, which is cool because I don't even know people in 70 countries. So it's like you know when something you're doing like it's bigger than you. It's, uh, it's really cool. And this just sort of list of countries <coughs> that I thought looked cool to show. Um, and the first, the first person to go into space was Yuri Gagarin. Uh, he was a, a Russian cosmonaut. It was April 12, 1961. Um, and he just, you know, good looking, charismatic guy. Uh, and he actually died se uh, seven years later in a MiG flight. You know, his trainer aircraft uh, crashed. And uh, he died, and that's actually one of the reasons why the United States uh, grounded John Glenn, uh, because they were afraid that we would lose our hero as well. So he wasn't allowed to fly into space again. And that's why when he got into the Senate, uh, he decided that he was going to fix that. And <laughs> he got himself a ride on the space shuttle and got to go work last time. Um, what, what really struck me, though, so, so my birthday is April 12th. Um, full disclosure. Um, so what was interesting is when I, I went, after I graduated from college, I went to work at Johnson Space Center Houston, and on the, you know, on, I found out that the first space shuttle launched on April 12th, so, it, you know, I noticed, that stuck out to me, because I was like, that's so cool, my birthday is on the space day, like, that's awesome. And then about that time, this was like 1996, you know, the, you know, the wall had come down and, you know, we're starting to open up more and learn more about the former Soviet Union and there was the first exhibit of uh, Russian space artifacts was coming over and was on display in Houston, so we went to go see it. And it was amazing how much at that time we just didn't know about this Russian space program. It just was this parallel <coughs> history that we didn't know anything about. So I was just learning all this stuff for the first time and I was like, wait, Yuri, the first person, the first human being to leave the surly bonds of Earth, like, also did it on April 12th? And not just April 12th, but like, April 12th, like 20 years later to the day, it was April 12th, 61, April 12th, 1981. And I was like, whoa, because I was, you know, I grew up listening to Sting, if the Russians love their children too, and watching 2010 and being like, you know, why can't our country just get along and go to Jupiter together, you know? And so like, that was my context, you know, in the 80s, you know, it's like, you gotta work with the Russians. Um, and so when I found out this like cosmic coincidence, happened to be on my birthday, um, I decided we had to act. So. 
um, when I was at this UN conference where I met George, uh, you know, with youth delegates from 60 different countries, you know, North Korea, Cuba, you know, all over, everywhere. It's like the most amazing thing. Um, I was like, you guys, you gotta, you gotta do this. And so, um, Yuri's Night was born. We did the first one um, in 2001. This is actually a picture um, from a nightclub in Los Angeles, uh, near Hollywood Vine, um, where we, we just threw a, a huge event um, for the first Yuri's Night, and then, you know, and we had, I think 69 events in 20 other countries around the world like also happening on that same night. It was really an amazing experience for us. Um, and, and the goal of the whole thing for us was to make space cool. You know, we were 20 somethings and we felt like NASA was doing this job of like, making space so boring. And we were frustrated because we thought space was so cool. So we were trying to reclaim the coolness of space. Um, and, uh, you know, we had some really cool, one of the things I'm really most proud of is. This is actually a hangar at NASA Ames, uh, I think in 2008. And basically over the years of Yuri's Night, you know, we got to meet more people and eventually the center director at Ames, uh, you know, took a liking to us and he said, well, I think we should throw a party at Ames. So that sounds great. Uh, so, you know, I, how cool is it to have like 4,000 people like dancing and, and there's like art and, you know, there's like the Burning Man stuff, you know, this you know. It's a San Francisco, you know, how are you not like that? Um, and we had the DJs going, and, and a lot of science came, came and exhibited. So this was a really cool mashup. Like all the scientists and all the burners were totally tripping out on just the clashing of the two cultures and how interesting it was for them to get to talk, interact with each other. And the people who have a leg in both communities were so excited. They're like, "Oh my God, families have come together!" <laughs> uh, so it was a really fun time. Uh, that's the center director, Pete Warden. Uh, just showing how cool he is by coming out at 1 a.m. To, to welcome the crowd in his like full wizard outfit. Um, he's my hero. Uh, and we had you know Pharrell Williams there and uh, Richard Garriott, who's a you know video game millionaire designer, uh, whose dad was a, a Skylab astronaut, and he actually is also paid to fly the International Space Station with the Russians. Um, so he's super cool. Um, that's me pregnant. Um, yeah, we had air, our acrobatic show, air, aerobatic airplanes flying, and more art displays from Burning Man, and it was just really amazing. So that's just one of you know tons of events around the world. This is one of the bigger ones. I mean, obviously they're usually a lot more grassroots, but um, it was just really fun. Common was there. He, he he even made up a special rap for us, like about Ames and Yuri's night in space and Yuri, and it was like this is so cool. <laughs> What's that? Can you sing it for us? Uh, I can't. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I recorded it. Um, so yeah, so you know, we've got a lot of media attention. You know, the, the, you know, some of the tech press really gets like the, the sort of unique space that this is and what it offers. You know, and of course you get all the, the cool costumes and you know we have the aircraft on display and um, you know Buzz Aldrin comes and um, you know all kinds of. You know, test the electric cars and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so, yeah, and then, and then the whole, you know, the whole goal, like I said from the beginning, was sort of to get that meme out there, like, like we got to work together, like as a planet. It's like putting aside all of that animosity of the past and really seeing space as the place where humans are united as like a species, and we do this together, you know, as a planet. And that's my goal. Uh, and then I'm just showing off here. We had the Ace of Cakes. We had also did a, a, another event at the NASA Goddard Space Center in Maryland. Um, and Ace of Cakes came and made this installation for us of Jupiter and Hubble Space Telescope. It was like about the time of the Hubble servicing mission. And it's like all covered in like their frosting and fondant and stuff. So <laughs> and we got to be on the TV show as, as the cake of the week or whatever. <laughs> And now I'm really showing off because that's me in a slave Leia outfit. <laughs> I knew I was planning to get pregnant, so I'm like, this is my last chance to do this. <laughs> um, and the other goal of Yuri's Night is just, you know, use space to bring the world a little closer together. That's sort of what I've been talking about. Um, and so there's some just pictures of other things around the world. This will show sort of like the reach and the, and the connectivity that we have as a, on a human level that I'm so proud of. Um, you know, students in Spain, students in Beijing, we actually had, you know, because a lot of our friends, you know, they're really into it now, and so wherever they are in the world on April 12th, they go on the website, and they're like, hey, what's happening near me? And so a couple of our friends were in Beijing, 
one year for April 12th, and so they looked up where the party was, and they went, and like all these aerospace students from you know the Aeronautical University of Beijing, like some of them it was the first time they'd ever seen a Westerner, you know, and it's like George Wyman from Boeing, and they're like, whoa, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's really fun, fun, you know, inter exchange. Um, the guys in Toronto convinced the Science Center there to host an event too, so that was you know really cool. Uh, you know, Boulder had a, you know, they just go to a bar and, you know, tell their friends to come and get the band to come and, you know, just, they just do it up. Um, but the future of Yuri's Night, one of the things we've always um, said with Yuri's Night is that we think it's a uh, holiday that could be celebrated 10,000 years in the future, you know, where humanity is scattered out through the galaxy. Um, you know, it's a, you know, we all turn back to look at the home planet um, and we'll, all what we have in common at that point is, you know, remembering the first human who left our home planet and started all of this. Um, so that's, some of the, that's our context for what we're, what we're doing. Um, so, Drinks Late is Small Way, I had so many creative, amazing, interesting, diverse experiences and people and talents in the room. I thought I would throw it open <clears throat> to see what ideas you guys had for Yuri's Night. Um, here, here in LA this year, um, there's some guys who are um, offering to host an event um, again near Hollywood and Vine, uh, the Wooden Vine Bar there, um, having a DJ and visuals and stuff. And so things we could do there, or things we could do in addition to that, or things we could do in other cities, or things we could do planetary wide, or whatever, <coughs> whatever you think. Oh, we even got a whiteboard. <laughs> a willing volunteer. Absolutely. So I just love to throw it open for questions or comments or suggestions or ideas or whatever you got. Provide assistance in filing extensions on your tax return. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd like to know how uh, you sort of create the framework for yours and like to spread, and like how much do you try to manage, and how much do you uh, yeah. At first, we were worried about managing it, and then we decided if we really wanted to grow, we had to just give it all away. Um, so everything's free, um, like registering is free. It didn't used to be actually, because um, we were trying to cover our costs and. Everyone, okay, everyone give it ten dollars or whatever, but now we're just like, hey, you know, just run with it. You can use all of our logos, you know, just do it nicely, you know, and, um, you know, if you want to buy a t-shirt or something, you got to pay ten bucks, but, you know, that's because it costs us ten bucks to make a t-shirt. Um, so, yeah, we try to try to crowdsource, you know, give it, give a total autonomy to the events to do whatever they want to do and run it locally and all that. And just, yeah, it's all virtual, so it's all run over the internet and, you know, using our various email lists and networks and stuff like that um, to promote it. Okay. Uh, when I was a kid, I thought nothing else but being an astronaut and I loved everything about space. And I, I want to see more of that with kids these days. Have you ever thought about maybe kind of expanding Yuri's Night to maybe having a Yuri's Day where you partner with like local planetariums and have like school kids come in and or partner with the local YMCA's to like have a day to really you know bring that back to the community and the kids? Yeah absolutely um, because it's so distributed and everyone knows what they, what they want, you know, a lot of people who have that as their passion are like, okay, you know, Florida, we're doing it all day and we're doing it with kids and we're getting the planetarium involved. And oh, cool. So yeah, people definitely have, we have a lot of people going with that direction. In fact, we have someone on our executive team who's like, her job is just reaching out to high school kids, you know, because she's a high school kid. So we're like, okay, that's your job. You're, you take care of the high schools. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a big, it's definitely um, part of part of the mix. Loretta, have you had any approvals from Space Station, either from the Russian side or the U.S. side, to celebrate up there? Yes, uh, amazing, amazing success with Space Station. So since 2003, we've typically gotten a, a recorded message from the Space Station every year from the crew on board, just shouting out to all the parties around the world, a happy, you know, very night. And then this past year, um, it was extraordinary because uh, Ron Guerin was going to be, he's an American uh, astronaut, and he was going to be on the space station for Yuri's night. And uh, he actually sent out a tweet, maybe October, like before his mission, like, oh, it'd be so cool if I could throw a Yuri's night in space. And we were like, what? And like, reply, reply! You know? um, so we got in touch with him. We're like, of course you can throw a Yuri's night. What do you need? 
paid, you know, and he's like, well, if, if you could ship me, you know, six t-shirts to Japan to put on the, you know, the, te the vehicle that's going up to space station for cargo, it's due, and I need it from Houston on by Monday, but to get it there and through the approval, NASA approval system to get it as approved cargo, but I could get it up this, okay, so we like fed six stuff in Houston. Um, and he's just been really fabulous. So, and there was the 50th anniversary of, flight, of the flight. So of course the Russians were totally on board. Um, and so yeah, we had all the crew in Yuri's night shirts and he had Yuri's night patches and Yuri's night stickers and he took pictures of them in the windows. And it, it was just lovely and he even brought some of them back. He managed to get down, download cargo, which is even harder um, from the International Space Station. He brought some of the stuff back recently. And so we have this like precious like space flown, like Yuri's night t-shirts and stuff. Um, so that was our, that's been our, the, you know, and they got a great picture of all the crew in their shirts and with, you know, Katie's hair like going straight up and, you know, and they're doing their toast to Yuri, I know, on the 12th, which of course they were going to do anyway. Uh, but it was great to have them really see that as, as part of, of the bigger worldwide event. Awesome. So basically, um, Yuri's Night is going to happen in LA. As, as you've seen, it has the potential to be an amazing party, a great time, um, just celebrate space. And so, so we definitely want to involve as much of the community as possible to, to make this happen. The, the more people we have involved, the more we can do, the more we can pull off, the better a party it can be. So um, we want to reach out to uh, both those of us in the space community and outside of the space community want to be a celebration of what it means to everybody on Earth, not just for, you know, people who make rockets. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, is anybody interested in helping out? Okay, awesome. You got mine shared, like, support on it. Okay. I also send that story behind it. Awesome. Yeah, very very cool. cool. Very cool. Anybody else? Sure. Cool. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, basically, uh, yeah. if you guys are interested, like, let's, you know, we can disperse the, the audience group sort of thing and just kind of yeah. come up here, start talking, start throwing yeah. ideas around. Um, one, one quick thing to note before we break, so um, the, the easy, do you guys have a mailing list or anything to, to get, get on? Um, uh, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, go to our website, www.yuri'snight.net. Um, you know, there, there should be a place to sign up for a mailing list. If, you know, if not, you can at least sign up for the Twitter feed, or, you know, <laughs> Facebook group or whatever. Um, those are probably more accurate than you know this anyway. Okay, and um, awesome. So check out your east .net. Um, Also, uh, Clyde and I and Simone run the LA Space Salon, and we're going to coordinate some of this organization through the salon. So you can also go to laspacesalon.com, get on our email list, and we'll send out a blast. Definitely, um, you know, in the next year, year, you know, next few days, next week, um, to get more information out there as well. So. Um, you know, those are ways to electronically get in the loop, but otherwise, you know, come up here and let's just start to figure out what we might do. So, let's do it. Yeah, and uh, lunch is uh, being served up here. If you want to go out and grab some food and come back down, uh, feel free to stay here and continue the conversation. Thanks, you guys.